The Auditor General provides assurance to Parliament on the accountability and performance of the Victorian public sector. The Auditor General conducts financial audits and performance audits and reports on the results of these audits to Parliament. On 16 September 2015, the Auditor General tabled his performance audit report realising the benefits of smart meters. This audit examined whether the deficiencies identified in our 2009 audit have been addressed and whether the Advanced Metering Infrastructure, or AMI program, is achieving expected consumer benefits. The audit found that there will be a substantial net cost to consumers over the life of the program, that only 80% of the full benefits are expected to be achieved, and that the state cannot directly control many of the costs and benefits. The government must now focus on improving transparency and reporting of costs and benefits, consumer education to encourage behaviour change, and maximising the benefits to consumers. This is important to help consumers get the most out of what they have paid for. In 2006, the Victorian government mandated the rollout of smart meters to all households and small businesses across Victoria to replace manually read accumulation meters. In 2009, Vargo tabled its report towards a smart grid, the rollout of advanced metering infrastructure, which was highly critical of the original business case and made a number of recommendations. In 2011, the government reviewed the program and the 2011 cost-benefit analysis made it clear there would now be a likely net cost of $319 million to consumers. Nevertheless, the continuation of the rollout was announced and this was said to be the better option for Victoria. The audit examined whether the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, or the Department, effectively addressed Vargo's 2009 recommendations, can demonstrate that the AMI program is delivering expected consumer benefits and is set up to maximise longer term benefits. The Department was the primary focus of the audit as it manages the AMI program. The Department of Treasury and Finance was involved only as it was responsible for the 2011 government review and administers the gateway review process. The Department addressed seven of our eight recommendations from 2009 and improved program governance and risk management as well as communications with consumers. One recommendation was assessed as partly met. This related to engagement with the regulator on benefits transfer. However, the outcome of the key process for passing network efficiency benefits on to consumers is not yet known. The 2009 audit found that when the AMI program was designed, the resultant benefits and costs were not adequately considered. While improvements have been made, they do not change the fact that the state cannot directly control many costs and benefits or alter the significant deficiencies that underpinned the original program design. By the end of 2015, Victorians will have paid an estimated $2.239 billion in metering charges, including the cost of the rollout and connection of smart meters. However, the department does not know the exact cost of the program. This is because the department does not monitor these costs. They are an off-budget item as consumers pay through their electricity bills, not through tax dollars. Consumers are entitled to clear and transparent reporting on costs particularly as they had no choice in paying for the rollout and costs are not reported through the usual government processes. The 2011 cost-benefit analysis found a net cost of $319 million, which may rise. 90% of the benefits expected by the end of 2014 have been achieved. Most of these benefits, approximately 80%, are avoided costs of the old accumulation meters. However, these costs have been replaced by higher costs. Current forecasts predict consumers will only achieve approximately 80% of the full program benefits by 2028. However, this depends on all issues and risks being effectively mitigated, all of which are not within the direct control of the department. The department is re-evaluating the benefits in the 2011 cost-benefit analysis and this may lead to change benefits targets. This slide shows the major benefits achieved to the end of 2014 against their expected target to be achieved at this time. As you can see in the third column, all of the expected benefits in avoided costs have been realised. Around half of the expected network operational efficiencies have been realised. However, only 2.5% of the expected benefits in tariffs, products and demand management have been realised. 
Approximately one quarter of the total expected benefits rely on 75% of Victorian residential customers taking up flexible tariffs and changing their consumption behaviour. Therefore, consumer action is a key determinant of future benefits realisation from the AMI program. On current rates of take-up, it is doubtful this 75% will be achieved. Therefore, a key role for the department is in improving communications to encourage the required behaviour change. Furthermore, most smart meter benefits are realised first by retailers and distributors before consumers are able to realise them. Ensuring these benefits are passed on is therefore critical to the realisation of consumer benefits. The department must also transparently report on benefits realisation to consumers as well as the costs. We made nine recommendations. They focus on publicly reporting on costs and benefits, improving consumer education and improving the pass-through of benefits to consumers. We also recommend that the department understands the impact of tariff reform and informs consumers to enable them to make informed decisions and minimise any unfair disadvantage. We also recommend that the department protects consumers from additional costs associated with pending competitive metering and considers options to improve information for consumers on electricity bills. The department's response fails to satisfactorily respond to the issues raised in the report. It has not clearly accepted all recommendations or clearly outlined actions to implement them. The Auditor General's comments urge the department to review its position in the interests of all consumers and to fully address the recommendations. The Auditor General will also closely monitor the department's progress in this regard. This slide highlights the key messages from the audit. This slide highlights the overall message from the audit. Our 2009 audit is listed on this slide. All our reports are available on our website. If you have any questions about this or other reports, or if you have anything else you would like to discuss with us, including ideas for future audit topics, please call us on 03 8601 7000 or contact us via our website.